Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Yes, yes, I made it. Uh, see this little thing right here? I got in a fight with a wrench over the weekend. <laughs> I was bent down trying to tighten the bolt underneath the, my trailer hitch. I put it in and I pulled and pulled and it went snap. <laughs> I literally sat back and saw stars. So it, you can't tell it's a little tender right there. <laughs> but it has not affected my brain yet. So that stuff probably manifests itself later. Hey, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. And most importantly, hit the like button. And because uh, magical things will happen over the holidays. So speaking of the holidays, today we only have 7,158 homes on the market. And as we get closer to Christmas and especially Thanksgiving, um, we see seasonal trends. However, having said that, <laughs> it doesn't look like we're going to see a seasonal trend. It is bucking the trend here. This is my chart that I've been doing since last year. And you can see that this is the sales number, the yellow number. It's going up and the inventory number is coming down. Now, let's put this into historical perspective. Now, although last year the numbers were extreme, uh, but they were still within the normal patterns. In other words, Thanksgiving's down, Memorial Day's down, Christmas is down. Here's last Thanksgiving. Look at this, sales just plummeted. This is the week of Thanksgiving, you know, now. And these are listings. And then they creep back up, and then they dip for Christmas. This line here is the trend line for sales. So when people say that sales are down, they're really not, not in Arizona. I mean, it's just a slight little tick, maybe 200 units. Um, today, we got a difference of 253 between the number of homes that came on the market and the number of homes that went under contract. But the anomaly is, why are homes under contract going in the opposite direction? And you know what? It might be investors. I don't know and I won't know until that data comes in and I'll be able to take a look at it, but it'll be a month out by then. Who cares, right? So, um, but we're not seeing that dip in sales and that's uh, unusual for this week. So maybe there'll be more of you out shopping tomorrow than I thought. Although I did venture into Costco by mistake. I, just, I don't know what I was thinking. Sunday, I said, oh, I'm going to go into Costco. I'm going to look for blah, blah, blah. And I walked in and I uh, I'm not going to stay. I mean, I couldn't believe the line. And they had pallets and pallets of pumpkin pies. There are high-end homes selling. See the inside of this Paradise Valley home that sold for $14 million in one week. Normally, that takes two years. Look at that thing. Now, I don't know who used to own it because usually when you look it up, it's got some kind of LLC associated with it. 16,556 square feet was this, and it was listed by Robert Joffe. Way to go, Robert. And uh, it was sold. It said, typically in a normal market, a house of this size might stay in the market for two years. He said, this one sold in a week. And it was sold by Jill Bernenstall of Walt Danley's Christie's International Real Estate. She brought the buyer along with Andrew Mellum of the Joffrey Group. So uh, a couple local people did a good job on this. Nice going. Merry Christmas to you. There we are today, 7,158 homes on the market, and this is our months of supply. When we look at it, we're starting to turn down again. We're sitting here at about 0 0.8. So you look historically, uh, here's 5.4 months back in 2014. Here's 5.1 in 2011. You go down to 2008, and we had about it and 2006, a year and a half's worth of homes on the market. So historically, we're way down there. This is going to have to spike up. Listings are going to have to spike up before things change. Now, there is chatter. You could find a lot of it that says that they call Phoenix in the new construction business probably one of the riskiest markets for new construction. And the reason they say that is there's a lot of permits out there. They're just not able to fulfill the obligations to get the homes done there's no materials uh, so and there's no labor and if they were they probably would have a hard time uh, selling them because there'd be so many homes being built so we're going to be two years out before we figure that one out so here's another chart it's a bit of an eye chart but it's basically showing listings for november so it's showing like 15 days here and each box is color-coded for example this is thursday we had 
you know, 11 listings come on, 10, 12, with a total of 4,193, and it's comparing all the way back to, let's see, 2001. So you can see that back here in 2008, we had 6,652 listings for the week come on, and now we're at 4,153. 4,193 were below last year by a little bit, and yet we are above 2019. But we're kind of crawling around uh, the basement. Um, yesterday, we spoke a little bit about Zillow canceling contracts. And some of these folks um, accepted the offer from Zillow and then said they were going to stay on several months while they wait for their new construction home to be finished. And they get the phone call that their cancels been, their contract's been canceled. And uh, so they're, they're up in arms. But you know what? There's nothing you can do. Yeah, if anybody's buying your home, they can cancel, uh, but and they forfeit their earnest money. So anybody can cancel at any time. These big guys tend to do it more than the little guys. And so earnest money is important. When you accept an offer, make sure there's some skin in the game. You get one like the one I talked about yesterday, where the earnest money was one thousand dollars. Zillow doesn't care. They upped it to ten grand uh, just to kind of make it a little more palatable for them, but it put them in a bad situation. So it just keeps getting uglier and uglier. And they're getting sued, but they're not getting sued by the consumer. Uh, these two iBuyer lawsuits won't be the last, it says. Zillow is facing two class action lawsuits for allegedly misleading investors and failing to inform them in a timely manner about the struggles of its iBuying business. They knew it was not going well. They knew they bit off more than they could chew, and they kept it from the investors. More lawsuits may be forthcoming as Zillow does damage control in the wake of closing Zillow offers, through which it used a proprietary algorithm to buy and sell thousands of homes. The company shuttered its iBuyer business in early November after apparently pausing it. So put simply, our observed error rate has been far more volatile than we ever expected possible and makes us look far more like a leveraged housing trader than the market maker we set out to be. I really want people to understand this, that Zillow did not get out because they're seeing a market crash. They got out because they made stupid decisions on the prices they were offering people for their homes. And any chart I challenge you in Arizona to look and you show me where it shows the prices are going down in Phoenix, in Arizona in general. We've gone up price per square foot. We're projected to go up based on the numbers we see today well into January. And really, Zillow opened door and offer pad that are buying homes in October. They hope to have them gone in January. So there was no uh, canary in the coal mine, so to speak. So they just got into a terrible situation where they overpaid for their homes. Remember, they had this gross price adjustment of 7%, the analyst is saying, stop, you're paying too much. Here's here's the number we think it should be. And they're going, oh, relax. We want our buyers to be very happy with this, so we're going to give them 7% more. And they did. And they said, ooh, that's not good. California home builder enters Phoenix market with big plans. Ooh, who's this? Um, Thomas James Homes Incorporated is expanding into Phoenix and it's going to get interesting here in a couple sentences. It comes at a time when their home buyer filed a $1 million, $100 million initial public offering in an effort to trade stock under the symbol TJH. Like I said in yesterday's video, Wall Street likes us. They're coming here. So they're going to put a guy named Ryan Huffman over the Arizona division and he is a local guy uh went to went to brophy i think it said he's uh came from richmond american homes he was also with pulte groups arizona division and uh but here's what they said they're going to do um phoenix is a natural step for this company up and said we have a good footprint on the west coast colorado and arizona and arizona is natural progression it makes sense for us so it said his goal is to buy aging homes in urban locations of the valley, demolish them, and rebuild new homes. Now, some people just don't like that. They're going to come in. I've seen that happen in uh, Seattle. I saw it happen on a big scale in Vancouver, British Columbia in the 80s. And they're going to build homes that look like this. 
Uh, so they're going to go into areas where there's old aging homes that need to be remodeled. And instead of remodeling them, they're going to scrape them and then put these in. This is probably going to happen down in places, you're already seeing it, down like uh, 68th Street in Indian School, just south of the Valley Hole down there. That's a popular neighborhood for this to happen. I've seen some monstrosities to be put in there that don't make sense for the neighborhood. you got these nice little quaint brick homes that we're selling for like three and four hundred thousand dollars and here's one for eight hundred thousand uh just didn't fit uh they don't care they're going to do it anyway so it's going to be interesting to watch um you know they're going to look for this at a neighborhood near you um but the investors are coming to arizona in a big way so that's when we went and looked at uh, the first chart here and we see that uh, sales are going up i don't think that's uh mom and pop going out looking for a house for the holidays i think it's uh I think it's investors, but I have been wrong before and I might be wrong again. So everybody go out and have a fabulous Thanksgiving. You're armed with all the data that you need to hold an intelligent conversation at the dinner table. and uh, Or they may have you sit off in the corner and uh, be away from everybody. I am going to be cooking a turkey on a green egg barbecue. And it's either going to be absolutely fabulous or we're going to have Chinese takeout. So either way, I'll let you know after Thanksgiving. Have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Thank you.